According to Confucius, Ren and Li are closely related with each other. The virtues will go astray if they are not governed and contained by the sacred form of Li. Quote, Respect without Li becomes tiresome. Caution without Li becomes timidity. Courage without Li becomes disorderly conduct. Straightforwardness without Li becomes rudeness. Unquote. Li help men to grasp how and on what occasion these virtues are to be applied. A brave man who is not bound by Li may simply become insubordinate and wild. And the respectful man may simply overact, falling into punctilio. So, Li provides the constraining pattern of social acts. However, without the constant determined will to attain Ren and all its associated virtues, Li will remain empty form. Without the structuring and educative effects of Li, Ren, as the highest ideal of personal excellence, cannot be attained. Let us now go back to the example we used in last lecture, the example of handshake, to closely examine the relation between Li and Ren. Back then, we say, in order for a handshake to go through, three conditions are to be met. The first condition, a handshake is an intentional act. Two men shake hands in order to make friends with each other. This requires them to know how to make friends with each other. Moreover, they both have a will to make friends. The second condition, the handshake is a socially coordinated act. The two men cooperate to create a social fact. They become friends. This is a complicated process. They both recognize that the other has an intention to make friends. They also take intention recognition as a reason for handshaking. Only in this context could handshake be used to symbolize making friends. This is something a man cannot do on the first social occasion. It takes practice to make perfect. The third condition, the handshake, is to take place in the proper setting. This knowledge can be got from empirical study. Suppose that a man who succeeds carrying out handshake is a man of Ren. The question we are concerned about is this. What is something that enables him to carry out the handshake? The answer is Ren. But how do we account for Ren? Ren is moral power. In this case, the moral power is a know-how capacity. Know-how capacity is acquired in the process of moral education, a process of ritualization. In other words, by ritualization, we arrive at a certain degree of Ren. A man of Ren is 
capable of the ritually acceptable acts. A ritual act would result in a certain normative fact. A handshake would bring about friendship between two men. And this constitutes the normative fact in ethics or in politics. Ren grows out of ritualization in the normative realm and works to start a specific ritual act. The ritual act brings about a normative fact, and this normative fact adds to the normative inventory which can be used to provide a context of ritualization. So, the two men are taught in their life experiences to grasp what to do concerning handshake on a social occasion. It happens that on a given social occasion, they are capable of shaking hands with each other as is required in that context. After a handshake, they become good friends, creating a new interpersonal relation. This new interpersonal relation adds to the established social network. The updated social network provides a more advanced ritualization which paves the way for a man of more Ren. Obviously, this is a reinforcing cycle. This is of great consequence to evolution of ethics and politics. Before we come to the discussion of Confucian ethics and politics, let us take a look at how Confucius Ren and Li improve on the ritual structure of Zhou dynasty. The Zhou ritual structure provides a normative context in which people are assigned accordingly as what role, status, and rank they possess in their life. This ritual structure presupposes and maintains hierarchy and authority. To some extent, this political design provides a metaphysical and a formal base for hierarchy and authority. However, the difficulty with this political design consists in assignment of people to proper positions. There was no rule to follow in this connection. This is where Confucius' philosophy of Li and Ren come in. Confucius agreed with the Duke of Zhou on the ritual structured politics. He even accepted the statement that ritual structure in general derives from the ritual community of family model. This we will be discussing shortly. What we now see is how Confucius contributed to the Duke of Zhou's political design. Confucius' philosophy of Ren is what is needed for a more complete political design. Assignment of people to political positions can be done in light of philosophy of Ren together with its close relation of Li. Well, different people have different degrees of Ren depending on how ritualized they are. People are assigned to different political positions accordingly as how morally powerful they are. As is shown in the reinforcing cycle, Ren and Li combine to create more and more sophisticated politics.